<sighs> so I'm back. I've taken a few weeks off. I needed to clear my head. I don't think you can blame me. What have you been up to? Yeah, that, that sounds about right. While you have been doing that, I've been cataloging, researching and trying to understand what's been going on. It's, it's weird. <laughs> Weird how when I focus on just, like, one thing, I feel at peace. Like, this is always what I was meant to do. Trying to find people and, and survive felt like such a burden. But reading? Data analysis. It's so satisfying. Data rarely lies to us. Especially heavily correlated events to one specific thing. So what did I learn, you ask? Well, first, thank you for asking, by the way. I hate monologuing without vetted interest in my topic. So I found out, using some math, which we all know is not my strong suit, and some newspapers, that we are 26 weeks into this end-of-the-world event. Can, can you fathom that? Remember when I was doing research on isolation and time was just one of those things that is the first thing to go due to prolonged social isolation? Well, when I found that out, I had a breakdown, probably for another day, very similar to what I may have expressed. Who knew we could last this long? I mean, that's kind of the hopeful thing, that we could last this long, right? So now that I have that, I can keep better track of where I am in the calendar. A farmer's almanac is, is so much more useful when you know what day it is. Now I can also plan, you know, harvesting food, planting crops, and when they best grow. See? Research and data are helpful. Now for the elephant in the room. What happened? What caused the event? And how do we reverse it? How do we course correct? Or cause it to happen again? Two negatives making a positive and all that. That's very broad and very hard to determine. So let's start at the beginning and let's go over the facts that we know are the truths. Things that we experienced. One, there was an earthquake in the middle of the night. Now, Utah does not commonly have earthquakes. Maybe small little tremors here and there. Nothing really big enough to report on. Exceptions to every rule. They're bound to happen here and there. Fault lines are almost everywhere, but they're not here, at least in Utah, not as big as what you might find in, like, the Japanese Empire or California or anything along those lines. Two, we saw a bright light flash across the sky. Blinding light. Not just a car driving by your window, but it was more like as if a meteor had just flown across the sky and created a closer yet brighter sun with no directional path. It didn't go across the sky from east to west. It didn't it didn't go from south to north or any other cardinal direction. It just was there. Just appeared and then in an instant gone again. 3 Animals went nuts. I didn't have any pets, but I did see strays, you know, cats, dogs, birds, just heading for the hills. And by that, I mean due west. Were they running towards or away from something? Still don't know. 
Oh, also, <laughs> I did do some research on ravens versus crows, but we'll come back to that later. Four. Communication went down. Internet, radio, telly, phones, all of it. At least temporarily. It wasn't an EMP, uh, an electromagnetic pulse that kills all electricity in devices all around you. Electricity was still working, but as we get further from a power plant being manned, the less likely we are just to be able to flip a switch and have power come through your line. Now we need batteries, solar panels, wind turbines. And last, people vanished. Well, not not vanished, but there, there's got to be a better word for it. Hmm. Their consciousness was put on pause? I don't know, man. I, I'm barely grasping at the facts right now, okay? Anyways, for the first few days, people were just in a coma. The people who were outside stuck in a singular spot. So something was affecting their brain. Then, they all started moving around, shambling, directionless. Nothing motivating. They weren't all heading in one similar direction or anything along those lines. Just aimless. Fast forward a little bit, and we see that they're moving in groups. And a few becoming violent. All that <clears throat> to say is what we know. The hard truth. So what caused this? I still don't know, but let's go off of tropes. I'm, I know, it's dumb and it goes against the facts, but what else do we have to go on? Uh, first, is this an infection? I think we can confidently say no, because even though the Black Plague wiped out a large chunk of the human population, it didn't do it overnight, and it couldn't do it overnight. This, what we're experiencing, has happened in an instant. That doesn't mean there isn't an immunity we need to consider. You know, if you get bitten or something along those lines. I'm still cognitive of my surroundings, and also, you know, the bullies, Brett and Eileen and Daniel. So next trope that we may want to consider are planets aligning. And <laughs> this one's a bit silly to me, but a lot of people put stock in location of celestial bodies. Hey, if that works for you, awesome. However, I am pretty sure that there are more than just one of me that is a cancer in the state of Utah. Salt Lake is a huge place, and there's got to be more cancers like me that suffer from a water sign. So, I mean, I, I, I read somewhere that, like, if you put enough people in a room, the chances of them sharing your same birthday only goes up the more people you throw in that room. I'm not going to quote numbers because I'm going to get it wrong, and then you're going to quote the numbers wrong, and that's not fair to you. And then you look like an idiot when they're like, um, actually, but it's just a statistic that I read. The numbers don't matter. It means that there's an exponential growth of chance the more people we put in a room. That's all I'm saying. I'm getting off track. Since there might be an immunity thing going on here, we can confidently say that Saturn is not in retrograde with the alignment of Mars or some such causing the end of the world. All right, let's see. What else is a common trope? Well, the Z word does have a long convoluted history tying back to Caribbean culture and Africa and those being tied to different sorts of magic, voodoo or other dark arts. I'm using air quotes here heavily because I'm sure there needs to be a conversation of what has been advertised as dark arts and the cultures they come from purely to continue alienating a group of people. 
but your magic wand and cauldrons are fine. I'm sure. I'm sure it's fine. So, <laughs> so, if there's some sort of magical connection, I think we would have more evidence of magic and miracles happening. Maybe, maybe not dragons and, and magic missile, but more doors opening on their own and uh, love potions. Or maybe a wizard putting out an ad in the paper offering to help you find your keys and lost wedding rings. But maybe we're all under a spell, so we can't recognize it. I'm sorry, this one is just harder for me to accept than the stars aligning, to be honest. I'm also going to throw God's wrath as part of this whole hard-to-believe magic concept. I'm not very pious. I do believe that there is a higher power. But I doubt that whatever that power may be, who may be nigh omniscient, all-powerful, who can see all things, hear all things, and know all things, being one day, at the start of it all, saying, Well, I created this, and I knew they would be evil, and instead of hitting the reset button, at the very beginning, I'll wait until their evil and, and hateful desires are purely against my will. That's when I'll hit the button. For the record, I am more deistic. If there is a god, they created everything. And kind of like a kid playing a sim game where you build up everything and you just kind of watch what's going to happen by itself. I mean, that's what I would do. And again, an omniscient being, knowing how things would turn out and how everything would turn against them, why bother letting it continue at all? You know, like the simulation game, you know that it's going to end with everyone dying. But then why not start it in such a fashion that it can continually run for forever? They knew the whole time how bad things were going to get. <laughs> the more I, I say this out loud, the more I feel there is less and less proof of a higher being. <sighs> Which leads me to say my last two thoughts and the ones that I think are more likely to have occurred. First, this is a terrorist attack. Some disgruntled territory of the Empire is revolting and struck the largest collection of people they could. The Americas being a symbol of power for king and country, or some children of the revolution who never really accepted the defeat of their war for freedom. Either way, the thought here is that this is a man-made weapon and it has affected a lot of people. Maybe the light was a rocket that dispersed a gas or caused some sort of mind wipe. And again, and I, and I recognize I'm, I'm really reaching here, but this makes more sense than anything else to me right now. This is where I'm putting my money. The second one, and to me, just as plausible, there's always in those said films, right? A man-made component. Maybe not necessarily a disease or an infection, but a, a Frankenstein motif. Putting things together that should never have been. I read this story one time where uh, there was a world cataclysmic event, which back in the day when I thought those things weren't going to be so common, that the scientist thought that she was the sole reason for what had happened because she had played God. Again, not thinking it's God retaliating, but that some military group who is designing the perfect soldier or a being that can't feel pain and always follows orders, maybe something there backfired and it's a lot smaller than I thought. Maybe, maybe it's not even worldwide, you know? Maybe it's just here and we're just locked away by some bigwigs who think they know best. And maybe they do. You know, <laughs> you know what would be wild? If this was all <laughs> just the next big season of Big Brother, like huge, right? Like we are locked away from everyone and everything and we're just being monitored for other people's entertainment. That's a theory that I think I can get behind. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> Even if any of these tropes are correct. We don't get the camera shot panning across the desolate wasteland. And 
exposition shots of newspapers and repeated radio broadcasts being played over the opening credits. Even in those films, they happen over time. An accelerated timeline to us as the audience. But what we've experienced happened in minutes. <sighs> well, that was everything I was able to figure out. What did you learn in your time off? As usual, I feel our relationship could improve by some decent dialogue. We'll get you out of your shell eventually, don't you worry. In the meantime, I am going to head east. I think I can head to the base up at the uni. If this was a terrorist attack, I feel like some voices would know it beforehand. Or, even if it was an experiment that had gone awry, there would be some record of it, right? Especially if this is more of a local event. Maybe just Utah is locked down. Maybe you're in Wyoming on a CB and you're trying to broadcast to me, but again, those bigwigs are, I don't know, putting up some sort of blockers so that way this can't go out and you can't broadcast in. Maybe I'm just broadcasting to an empty ether. Maybe Utah doesn't even exist anymore. Ooh, I like that theory. Utah got pulled into another realm just to say to Utah. Ah, oh, but that doesn't work because Brett and Eileen, they came from Idaho. And I mean, they could have been lying. But that doesn't... I think that that's not worth putting the energy and thought behind. No, we're, we're, we're done there. <laughs> okay, so I'm heading back, to, uh, so I'm heading up east to the base, get information. I recognize that there isn't going to be a file on someone's desk with top secret stamped onto it just available to me, right? But, you know, filing cabinets and code names, that sounds kind of fun. Besides, who wouldn't want to break into an encrypted computer and go, I'm in? I know. <laughs> I know I'm working off of a lot of assumptions. But uh, what else do I have? I'm... I... I won't be at my usual spot. I've given up on that for the next little while. You were never there. Why keep trying? Why waste the time? That sounds... Sounds a bit manipulative, and I'm sorry. That's definitely not the way I meant it to come across. So, until I can give you my report to the survivors that are listening, or my confession to Big Brother, good luck. <sighs> Listen, you aren't alone. You don't have to be. If you do need help, light a fire or something, and I'll head towards you. But... Good luck out there.